I was appointed head teacher at FCC in September 2020. I've previously been a head teacher um, in Devizes School in Wiltshire and a school in Bristol. Um, I was really attracted to the post um, because uh, bringing my experience, I felt I could make a real difference. You know, when I visited the school almost two years to the day, um, you know, I really connected with the students. I felt it was a lovely atmosphere. Staff are very loyal and professional, and I felt that I could come and make a difference. I was really excited by the prospect of working within a multi-academy trust that had all of the primary schools that fed into the secondary school, um, and I haven't regretted coming. So it's 18 months since I started. Obviously, due to the COVID pandemic, then you know the work that we've done and the way that we've we've sort of functioned and the operational and strategic direction of the school has, has been affected by that and the challenges. But I must say that students and staff have been magnificent. They've adapted uh, brilliantly. And we're at a position now where I think much of what we are, what we are doing is about moving forward now. You know, we've learned from the pandemic. We've learned from the, from the changes. And actually, I think we're probably better people coming out of this. Therefore, you know, moving forward, this is a really good opportunity to you know, set out the vision, set out the direction of travel, and also explain some of the things that have happened behind the scenes. FCC is a, a great school. Um, any student that comes here can be guaranteed you know, of a really warm welcome. Despite the fact that the school has grown, um, you know, which, which in itself is, is, is one of the uh, you know, exciting challenges about scaling the school up, you know, it remains a really very friendly place. It's a school which you know, puts student well-being at, at the forefront, in fact, all well-being of staff and students, um, which is even more important, uh, again, in a, in a post-pandemic world, particularly around students' mental health. I think the pastoral care is, is excellent. I think the teaching and learning is very individualised, uh, but there's also a consistency across the school within departments. Um, you know, it really is an excellent environment. The opportunities that students have which again over the last 18 months have been slightly less but we're getting back into the territory of you know, fantastic trips. Uh, the school production which took place two weeks ago had over 130 students involved. It was quite phenomenal. You know, the sports, the other activities, you know, it is a place that provides really, really strong opportunities and I, I guess if you were to really push me hard on my educational philosophy, it's about giving students um, the confidence to take those opportunities and then a school that provides the best possible opportunities for children. So the curriculum at FCC is, is quite a traditional curriculum. It uh, allows students to aspire to academic excellence. Um, over the last few years, we've also adapted that to support students who are coming through with different needs. Um, it's a very progressive curriculum. We are very lucky, or not very lucky, we're, we're fortunate in that the school is, is full of uh, subject specialists. We have, um, you know, we're fully staffed with, with, with experts in, in their areas. I say experts, but also actually I like staff and, and particularly teachers to be learners themselves because it's about modeling to people's, you know, the best way of, um, of learning, you know, and, and setting yourself up to get into uh, uh, the struggle zone outside your comfort zone so that you, you, you learn by your failures is, is an excellent way to be. You've got to have an environment of trust, which I think the school provides, um, and there really is excellence um, across all areas. Uh, one of the things that we have already worked on, and I would say is a key part of, uh, of the school moving forward, is a, a teaching and learning framework, which we call the excellence framework. Um, and by that, actually, we've learned over the last two years that getting back to the basics of teaching and assessment for learning and what really matters um, is really important. So, you know, really excited about bringing that consistency. You know, it's all based on strong relationships, strong relationships in the classroom. Um, and that's where we're looking and that's where we're heading. So the excellent framework is something which we are embedding at the moment. Um, as a direct result of that, you will see improvements and consistency around teaching and learning and assessment for learning as we move forward. One of the key things that you would do as a new head teacher, and again, I've been, we, we, we've been delayed probably by about a year on this, is to kind of revisit and uh, relook at the vision and the values, particularly the values. Um, so what we've done is we've re, redone the values on the basis of uh, what's been reflected back to me from students and parents and staff and the local community, um, and also reflected on how we might have changed during the last 18 months, you know, what becomes more important to us. Those values, um, which would be published to everybody uh, in, in due course, really focus on three main things, kindness, honesty, and respect. I think they kind of speak for themselves, but we really do value, you know, a relational school where 
that kindness actually is, you know, potentially life-changing for people. And, you know, in an ever-changing world, I think kindness is the most important thing. We do that with really high aspiration. We do that with high expectations and high standards. But, you know, my view is that, you know, kindness can change the world. We do it in a spirit of um, trust and we do it in a spirit of cheerfulness. You know, we're very privileged to be in a school like this. We're very privileged to live in this country. So therefore, making the most of that, enjoying every single day, it's an important part of school. And I think post-pandemic, that's another really important um, message to get back to people. You know, you're allowed to come and enjoy school. We have high, ex high expectations and high standards. Um, equally, one of those ways in which we achieve that and develop that character is by working with the local community. You know, again, that's been stored because of um, restrictions, but, you know, I firmly believe in the Duke of Edinburgh scheme. I firmly believe in working with the local community. This opportunity now is a good example of working with, you know, people outside of the school. We've changed the way that we do work experience. We've changed futures and aspirations days. I really would like to bring more community connections into the school. I'd like to bring more uh, contributions from our partner primary schools working within the trust. I think it's a really important and exciting opportunity for us to develop. Key areas would be around young people's mental health, working with the community, will be environmental causes, we're already involved with uh, tree planting schemes, um, and the more we can involve other students and, and then the community, the better. So mental health for young people is, I mean I think it always has been a key area and I think even more so now it's a, it's a key area because of the impact again of the pandemic and, and the other pressures on young people, you know, not least social media. You know, schools are very well placed to deliver. Um, I think all schools can do more and I think as a school it's an area where we want to look at doing more. Um, part of that comes back to our school values because actually if we are consistently working around the same set of values and core purpose then you know, that allows us again to you know, come back and reflect on, on, on kindness. I think one of the things around mental health is that actually if you are um, able to talk to someone, if you're able to express that concern and you're able then to recognise that possibly through that conversation with someone else, you are then um, in a position to do something about it. You know, so creating a culture in school where that openness and, and students and staff feel like that they can talk to anyone, you know, that message about it's okay not to be okay, um, is really, really important. Um, you know, that actually requires you know, more work on the school's behalf, more training for staff, you know, continuing to embed that culture. But I think we're on the right journey towards that. You know, again, as the school opens up and we involve the wider community and have more opportunities, uh, I think there's a good opportunity there to, to, to move that forward. Equally, the sixth form play a really significant role as visible leaders um, and supporting younger students in the school. The school community at Farrington Community College is a very diverse community. Uh, the wider community is as well. We're very lucky in that sense because I think that adds um, huge value to everyone's experience at school. It's really important in education that we um, are able to promote those values again, that we treat everybody with respect, that we treat everybody with kindness and that we learn from other people. There is a huge amount within education, uh, particularly with the world as it is at the moment, where we are you know, really curious uh, about the way that other people live, the way that other people are, uh, and that we celebrate that difference. Uh, we are you know, privileged that we have um, you know, a number of international students that come through from, from Watchfield and from the Defence Academy, you know, and that adds real value. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do more around celebrating diversity. I would say that some of the school existing strengths are you know the stability of the staff the loyalty of the staff the professionalism staff the fact the staff care i would say the behavior in the school is very strong students have a real sense of belonging all of these things are things that we would like to develop even more so but they are existing strengths having added to that you know we've got a new house system which again i'm really excited about you know things like the school sponsor day those extra collective you know, responsibility activities are, are great. We also must know that um, you know, most of our students come from our trust school, so the school is already known to them and those relationships with families, those relationships with existing members of staff are, are really important because the most important thing that you can have is you know, a confident young person. If a young person is confident and the school grows that confidence, then you know, they will be able to access those opportunities and they will be able to strive to you know, become a better person, which is what our core purpose is about. I've described many of the existing strengths of the school. It really is a great school. You, know, you have staff that are loyal and professional and hardworking, absolutely providing a, a caring, productive environment for the students. Students are you know, generous, they are kind, they are you know, ambitious. 
Um, it, is a, it is an excellent school. I, I feel like my external experience and my experience of working in a number of schools over the last 10, 15 years as a senior leader has given me the opportunity to, one, be really consistent about understanding the school's vision and values. I keep coming back to the values because that is the core purpose of the school and it's an area we can be absolutely consistent. Um, and as the school grows, you know, the school is now 1,400. I think 20 years ago, it's probably 700. You know, that has to be taken into account. You know, we have to scale up. We've already appointed a business manager. We've appointed new behaviour, uh, pastoral assistants, and we've got a new deputy head coming in. These are all actions that will move the school forward as we look at systems to make sure that the school um, operates really efficiently, uh, is a good at communicating to all stakeholders, but remains a school that feels a bit smaller and feels like it's the friendly, caring environment that it is. Focus on teaching and learning is getting back to basics almost. Um, again, in a, in a pandemic world, you know, teaching and learning was very, very different. Actually really understanding what makes um, you know, the best outcomes in the classroom. And much of that is around um, developing strong relations, really understanding children, and then developing those progressive techniques to move them forward. From a student point of view, I'm really keen, like I said before, about developing young people's mental health, but also about developing, you know, better self-regulation, building that confidence so that students can, you know, like I said before, access all areas of the curriculum and all those brilliant opportunities that school brings forward. Um, systems, again, scaling up, I'd like to see us having an absolute disruption-free learning across the whole school in every situation. Uh, you know, behaviour is good in the school, but having that extra kind of higher standard, I think, you know, allows everyone the space to be themselves um, and allows for different learning styles. Central to that is the leadership. Um, often, uh, you know, schools and establishments can overlook leadership. People get to positions of leadership because they're particularly good at their job. I think there is a language around leadership, there is a, a methodology, a philosophy that um, everybody needs to um, you know, work towards, that we grow leaders, that we grow confident leaders. Um, I don't just mean senior leaders, I don't just mean middle leaders and heads of subjects and heads of year, I mean every single teacher, every single pupil. Um, once you develop and grow leaders, you need to give them the opportunity to then shine. So developing those opportunities, which the school is already very good at, you know, some of the trips, some of the ways in which we uh, you know, run the school productions, the way in which we run uh, football teams and netball teams and sports leaders and you know, performing arts leaders, you know, providing those opportunities for young people to really excel. And again, that comes back to working more with the community as we open up you know, in, in a post-COVID world. Um, so bringing it all back, I mean, much of that is around um, centred on the school values because if you have those at the heart and you have an absolute core purpose from everybody pulling in the same direction, then you, know, you have a school which is a, which is a great school becoming an even better school. And within that, you have individuals growing in confidence, becoming um, the best that they can possibly be.